Okay, in our continuing our introduction to Illustrator, I made a bunch of paths. I made some with the pen tool, some with the shape tool, some with my favorite tool, the pencil tool. But right now, all of them are expressed the same way. So these paths are all a stroke, which means an outline, right? And they have no fill. So these are not colors. These are properties that go with the paths. If I want to select the individual paths, notice on my layers, they are each already individual. Whenever you create a new path, just like when you use vector shape tools in Photoshop, it automatically creates a new layer for you each time. These aren't layers, these are paths. They're all in this layer. Let's see. So they can be selected individually at any time. The arrows here are different than in Photoshop. The black arrow is not really a move tool, though it can be used that way. It's what I call the large selection tool. So if you click on something, it will click the whole thing, right? So this is another way. If I, if I draw a rectangle, I can click multiple paths and select them all at once. And if I click it, that means I can also rotate it. I can also scale it and transform it. It doesn't mean I can warp it and do a lot of other crazy things, but I can do things like flip it. But instead of flip horizontal and flip vertical, it's called reflecting in Illustrator. And then you choose whether it's vertical or horizontal. Right? So that is the, the large selection tool. The next one is the small selection tool. This is for selecting individual anchor points on the path. And then you can move those around. And that's important because it drastically changes the path. But you cannot use the large selection tool to select individual anchors on the path. Right? So we have two very necessary selection tools. White and black arrows, large selection tool, small selection tool. Let's select a path with the large selection tool. I need to get out of isolation mode. I don't know how I got into that. So now let's look at the properties. Right now, this path is empty with an outline, which means if I drag it with that large selection tool over to the gray off of the, off of the artboard, which is this there, for our reference, all it is is an outline, right? What if I turn off that outline? I can click on the stroke and use this little a none icon. And now I have an empty path. It's not there unless I happen to hover over it with a move tool. What if I turn on the stroke and I give it a color? And I give it, under options, more thickness. And if I make it not uniform anymore, but wavy, or not wavy anymore, but gestural, or not gestural anymore, but curved on just one side, right? Or if I want to get fancier, instead of a basic stroke, what if I do one of these built-in ones, like the charcoal? And now that path now expresses itself as individual vector shapes that are mapped to that path. That's just the outline. The other way I can mess with this path is with the fill. So I can fill it with a different color than the stroke. So if I fill it with blue, right? Or I can fill it and turn off the stroke. And then I just have a cutout shape. Now I like to design with filled paths. That's just how I like to work. So you can think of this a lot like the shape tools in Photoshop and think of it as pieces of paper that you are cutting out to make your logo. Now, before we deal with color, we're just going to deal with black and white. So the defaults, you can always get back to the defaults by clicking on this little icon. The defaults are a white filled path <laughs> with a black stroke, right? But then you can swap them. So you have a black filled path with a white stroke, and then you can turn off the white stroke. 
but you have to select the path before you do that. So if I'm making a logo, how can I do that? Well, I can just build up a lot of shapes, just like we did in Photoshop. And I can use the large selection tool to move them. I can hold down shift and keep them. I can even copy and paste a path, command V, and I can make an image, right? And then I can do white shapes. So change my fill to white. And then copy and paste that, use the large selection tool and move it over. And look what Illustrator is good for. It will help me line these up. It will automatically kind of line them up and show me when the centers are matching. And it's all made for kind of clean design. Then what if I want a little triangle? Well, maybe I'll freehand it. Freehand a little skeletal nose. Make sure it's a closed path. Oh, you see, I drew it so nicely, but I have it set on smooth. So it smoothed it out too much. So I'm going to go right to the middle. And I'm going to draw this just with my mouse. A little skeletal nose. And then I'll fill that with white and with no stroke. Right? And then let's do some teeth. A little Mickey jack-o'-lantern here. Now this is what's confusing about Illustrator. This is not a black and white logo yet because the white is actually there, right? We need to cut out the white from the black to have it be a, an actual black logo. So the way we do that in Illustrator is a little complicated, but I wanted to introduce it early. I select the paths that are overlapping. And in this case, all of the paths are overlapping, right? But especially these white ones, I can hold down shift and select multiples. Ah, there we go. And now I use what's called the Pathfinder tool, which you can find under Window and Pathfinder. Mine's over here. And I am going to cut them out, <laughs> right? So there's, I can merge overlapping paths. I can cut them out. I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to change that path back to black. And then I can also use the Pathfinder to merge them together all into one shape. And now I have a path that's more complex. Oh, how did that happen? That was weird. <laughs> that is my logo, right? Which means no matter how much I zoom in on it, it's going to be perfectly smooth. And that's the advantage. So then what if I want to make this Mickey Mouse you know, macabre kind of skull-like shape. What if I want to make it melting? Well, I can change a path, but it's different than Photoshop. I don't just add pixels or take them away. Instead, I select the path. I'm going to use my favorite tool, the pencil tool. And if you hold down Command, you'll go to the last selection tool you've used, right? So that gets me to the small selection tool. That's fine. Once I can see the anchors of the path, I can redraw its edges with the pencil tool, as long as I start on the path and end on the path. And preferably, just to make sure you're ending on the path, you want to go through an anchor point. And it redrew it. So if I want to make this eye droopy, I have to make sure I can see the anchor points for this cutout. And then I can redraw the eye. redraw the cutout. But I have to see the anchor points. So I think of the mat the um, pencil as kind of magic scissors, right? 
like you're cutting out of construction paper, but at any time you can add more on to your shapes with the pencil. It takes some practice. It really matters where you click. If I want to take a bite out of this ear. And remember, you can set the pencil to be more smooth or less smooth, right? That's how you can start working. And that's how our black and white logo will start. Or not black and white, just black, a black cutout. Now, so the theme is melting macabre, right? And I want you to start with something that already exists in the culture and then work from it. I have no idea why it's doing that. That is so bizarre. I think it's because I'm in isolation mode. So this kind of thing could work, right? That can get you started. But first, I want you to start in your sketchbook. So here's an example I found. Look for inspiration. But here's an example I found on one of the blogs I follow. And it was just a fun graphic designer's redesign of the Cub Scout logo, right? So that's kind of like a logo mashup. Take the existing Cub Scout logo, which looks very dated, right? And kind of mash it up with fun and pizza. This is done. To make it an effective logo, it's done as a vector, right? So I am taking Twitter and its kind of iconic bird logo. And I wanted to kind of make it melt, make it more um, gory, but also kind of keep that cuteness and still have it be recognizable. So these were the references I used. I loved this melting Mickey. It's beautiful but it's still not copyright, you know, free. It's still obviously Mickey Mouse, so I wouldn't push that in my store, but I, I appreciate that other people do things. And this is the sketch I came up with, right? So this is going to be my Twitter bird that is melting. It's going to have a little shadow underneath him, but that could also be like the puddle, right? And I like the idea. You can see all my construction marks here. It's hard to get the shape right. So sketching is important to try to get a silhouette, a cutout that feels right. And I didn't want the, the speech bubble to go up. I wanted it to look kind of more like spit or something. And it's turned upside down, right? So you kind of can play with it. Now the challenge is how do I turn this into black and white shapes? Well, what I'm going to do is take this sketch and open it with Illustrator. And so this is what we'll do at the beginning of next class. If I take this sketch and open it with Illustrator, then I can make a new layer, just like we do in Photoshop, above it, right? where I'll build my vectors. And on this layer, I can actually dim it to 50%. This is called onion skinning. So that it just becomes a guide. I can even lock it so I don't accidentally create vectors on that layer. And on the layer on top, I can start setting my defaults up. I want no stroke and I want a black fill. I'm going to use the pencil and I could just start drawing it. Like I know I want these to be black, or at least I think I do. And I want to make sure that all these paths close, but each time I make a path, Oh, that's too smooth. So let me change my pencil tool to be a little bit more accurate for now. So think of this as digitally inking over your sketch. And it's good to use a stylus for this, and it's good to take your time, right? But the big thing about Illustrator is that you can modify everything. So now in this layer, I already have two paths, which can be individually modified, redrawn, resized, whatever. But what if I decide, well, I actually want this whole thing to be black. So I fill that shape in and I make it black. But then I want the eye to be white on top of it. And maybe cut it out. Oh, wrong one. So what I can do is try changing the color of that to white just to see if I like that. Oops. 